Now a man who has a language all of his own, it gives me deep joy to introduce Professor Stanley Unwin. Here he is. Thank you, deep joy. Are you comfortable square on the body set? It is, it is. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Motor Only Beep Beep. Hang on, what? Good day, holy day today. Hang on. Anyway, this is Motor Only Beep Beep. Don't know what's happening. Anyway, this is all we've got coming up today. See if you can guess it. I watched the Elvis film last night. With your Elvis Presley, what's worse than Swivelly Pay? Show you had. Showed it first time in pictures. There's a withering contrapole of the withering of the hipper. Sideways head with a withering tilty. Give him that expression of the little dog he loved like in the eyeball, which he conveyed to the smaller female of the species. Couple with his music because he did trickly hi-fi on the strings to help him along the Roma. It was in the moment of time. This thunder mold of expression came from him. What's happening to me? Oh! Who's coming up? Stanley Unwin! So today on this lovely Sunday afternoon, I'm in quintessentially English little village called Long Buckley and uh, it really is you know it's one of those sort of picture card places got a thatched roof on the pub that tells you all you need to know <laughs> so I've taken a, a little stroll outside the village not only five or ten minutes from the centre where the church was and this is the bungalow that Stanley Unwin used to live in there his daughter was the uh, headmistress at the school seemingly so that's the former home of Stanley Unwin. Adds a bit more to it, doesn't it? We know where he lived now. Lovely. And behind me is the school where his daughter was the headmistress. There we go. Just a short way down from the house and a short way to the grave that way. There we are. Getting the whole family history here. Deep joy. This is the church coming up. Looks phenomenal, doesn't it? Look at that, super duper. Yeah, look at those trees. I love how they've done it. So the parish of Church of St. Lawrence, Long Buckley. Oh, fantastic. I don't think the actual church is going to be open, but never mind. If it's not, it's our Stanley we've come to see. And all the time, the deep joy, the scandly dangly, the deep eye of the moon dangly from above. Something like that, you know? And as the story goes, his own language started quite simply because uh, of his mother. His mother came on one day home and she said, um, Stanley, I followed in front of a tram. So Stanley said to his mum, well, there is no word for, there's no verb for follow-up. You may fall, you may flop, but not follow-up. And she said, well, I follow-up and he's grazed my kneecap here. So that's where it all began. It was like a gobbledygook. So this guy could uh, hold a conversation and you'd grasp a tiny bit of it. Just enough to get to know what he was saying, basically. But every other word, I mean, he appeared in everything. Carry On, the films, all the celebrities. They all had him on the show. And he wasn't really a show guy, a showbiz guy in the beginning. What a, what a beautiful setting, look. Just got to spin you around, look, can you see? I mean, a lot of these graveyards are lovely, but I think this one's exceptional. There's something about it. I think it's the church as well. Look how lovely and old it is. Also, something to do with knitting, knitting patterns. You know, one pearl tog. To, I can't remember that one. It's one pearl tog, so sweet, whatever, I can't remember. <laughs> it was just crazy, you know. But, um, unuisms. That's what it's became known as. Really good in the Carry On films when you watch the clips. You've got Sid James and all the characters there, the well-known ones, and he he holds his own. I mean, he's always, whenever he came to do one, um, it was said that he wasn't an actor, but he could um, he could usually get it all out in one go. So obviously, you know, he got the the style off. And um, basically, in an interview, he just had lived it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Very sweet. Have a look at this. There we go. Isn't it gorgeous? The trees really make it, don't they? Look, see? Like a little fairy tale, isn't it, really? Now, I know that our Stanley is somewhere just over here.
because it's the back of the church I've seen the photographs so we're gonna go over and we're not gonna fill all up we're gonna find him his parents which were Ivan Oswald Unwin and Jessica Elizabeth near Brand they both emigrated to South Africa in the early 1900s Stanley himself was born in Pretoria in 1911 unfortunately after that his father died in 1914 so the family were quite poor and in poverty so his mother arranged for the family to return to England she took a job at the Bowes Road police station and Stanley had been sent to the National Children's Home in Congleton Cheshire but in the early 1920s he studied radio television and language at Regent Street Polytechnic in London Stanley married Francis in 1937 and they had two daughters and a son he stated afterwards that Unwinism really started when he was reading his children bedtime stories in 1940 he was given a job in transmitter maintenance for the BBC and was assigned to the Borough Hill transmitter station Stanley, Francis and their nine month year old daughter Marion moved to Long Buckley in Northamptonshire where Stanley would reside for the rest of his life Stanley's early career was really in wireless radio communications and this coupled with the BBC's war reporting unit that's what ultimately in 1944 provided his passage into the media while based in Birmingham from 1947 to 1951 Stanley made his first accidental transmission while testing equipment he handed the microphone to broadcaster F.R. Buckley who had lived a spoof commentary about an imaginary sport called Fash Buckley then encouraged Stanley to join in and introduced him as the Codlington Coffee site, handing back the microphone. Whereupon Stanley continued in unease. The recording was played back to two BBC producers who added sound effects. It was eventually broadcast on Pat Dixon's Mirror of the Month programme and after receiving a positive response culminated in another sketch show in which Stanley played the man from Atlantis was interviewed about the life of the sunken city. The broadcast produced Stanley's first fan mail from Joyce Granfell, who had been impressed by his performance. Since Granfell was Unwin's heroine, the encouragement gave Stanley a boost and he was inspired to break into show business. After the war and while in Egypt and recording a series of shows by Frankie Howard, Stanley was pushed onto the stage and told to do a turn after the actor had suddenly fallen ill. Stanley's next major breakthrough came when producer Roy Spear introduced him to a comedian, Ted Ray. Once Ray had heard Stanley talking, he simply said, I want him in the series, namely The Spice of Life, co-starring June Whitfield, Kenneth Connor. During the mid-1950s, Stanley performed in a dozen of shows for Spear and made the acquaintance of Johnny Risco and his daughter Patsy, who became his managers for the rest of his career. By the end of the 1950s, Stanley had ventured into the film industry, being given a part in Cardio Robinson's film Fun at St Fanny's, 1956. In 1969, Stanley appeared in Jerry Anderson's Super Marination TV series, The Secret Service, both in person and as a voice of the puppet character Father Stanley Unwin, whose appearance was based on him. Episodes typically comprised one or more scenes in which the character of Unwin would attempt to baffle opponents in his gobbledygook. When Salou Grade, Anderson's financial backer and head of the distributor ITC, was introduced to Unwin Dialogue, he cancelled the production on the basis that he believed viewers would not understand what Unwin was saying, despite the fact that such confusion was intentional. Although he was professionally retired, Stanley continued to do and make performances in the 1970s. He appeared on the Max Bygraves show on ITV, sometimes speaking normally and sometimes in gobbledygook. In the final episode, Max Bygraves tested a number of gobbledygook phrases on Stanley, who claimed that he could not understand them. Unwinnies has been compared to Lewis Carroll's nonsense poetry, such as Jabberwocky, where the sentence sounds superficially like English, when read aloud, Unmanism, also known as basic Engli Twangi Fido, was an augmented and mangled form of English in which many of the words were deliberately corrupted in a playful and humorous manner, but in which it was still largely comprehensible to the listener. Stanwin's performances could be hilarious yet disorientating. 
where the meaning and the context were conveyed in a disguised and picturesque style. For example, in his talk on music, Populodo of Musicale, Stanley would say, Stanley died at Danitri Hospital in Daventry on the 12th of January 2002. He is buried in the churchyard at Long Buckley with Francis. A thanksgiving service was held at St Lawrence's Church in Long Buckley and was ended with the rendering of Bye Bye Blackbird by John Percival and Friends. The validation had been prepared by Stanley's family in his own style. Goodbye to your loyal peepilodos and now gathering most to amuse it and to have tittly elbow and nice cuffly odo tea, oh yes. Unwinnie's work is considered to have been significantly influenced on two books written by John Lennon, In His Own Right, 1964, and The Spaniard in the Works, 1965. Honestly, it's such a difficult thing to try and imitate. But look, I'm going to take a look around because I know you can, you're near the church with this one and I don't want to... Look at that, it's not very big. We've only got to the bottom gate down there. So we're going to take a look around here for our Professor Stanley Unwin. Stanley had the cutest way with him. I've seen it. I've already seen it. There we go. I'm going to spin you around. We've found it. Here we are, look. One of the cutest men, honestly. His whole family talked about him after he died and said how wonderful he was. Oh, no, it's got it on his grave. Deep joy. Oh, it's wonderful. It is deep joy. It is deep joy in loving memory of Stanley Unwin, engineer and entertainer in radio, television and films. 7th of the 6th, 1911 to the 12th of the 1st, 2002 and his dearest wife, Frances Anne. 23rd of the 9th, 1916 to the 2nd of the 11th, 1993 reunited in their heavenly body deep joy wonderful Stanley uh, you are fantastic Stanley or Professor Stanley Unwin as I remember you deep joy for me to do this film you were part of my childhood and I really loved all the funny language and the, the fun that you had with people and what a beautiful setting look look at the old church there I'm quite touched to be here. It's the truth, I swear. Really did love Stanley. I did, I swear I did. <laughs> uh, I feel quite emotional on this one, to be honest. I really do. He was such a sweet guy, a part of my childhood. You know. Stanley, you've made my day. Uh, oh, God, I feel quite emotional about this one, actually. It's like... Um, a little bit of your past has all come to be, isn't it? When you when you see the gravestones, because you've only ever seen them on TV. <laughs> Thank you, Stanley, for all the deep joy. Oh dear. Well, look. Don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell for future videos. It's all free, and you won't miss them. Give me a thumbs up and a comment, and I'd love that. Thank you ever so much today for watching. Deep joy from me. So good night from me and Elvis and especially our dearest Professor Stanley Unwin. Suddenly I did a little sinker pole, job it and how, caused a jerky over a pin pole and I've been suffering ever since.